anybody that just leaves the dock mm -hmm. to go cruising for the day and just uses mm -hmm. the motor to get in and out of the slip yeah. and then go sailing and then comes back, uh, electric propulsion is really attractive. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert series here at Boat How To. I'm Jan Attenstedt. I'm uh, Nigel Calder. And uh, today we want to talk about something that many people um, dream of and actually many people also do, but in uh, yeah, more or less successful ways, and that's electric boats. So um, Nigel, what's your take on that and why don't we see more electric boats, especially cruising boats out there? There's a... There's two fundamental differences between a boat and a car. You know, we have cars now that'll do 300 miles, mm. what's that, 400 kilometers yeah, more, on, even more, yeah. on a battery mm. charge. And uh, Tesla are saying that within a few years, they'll be at twice that. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of range with cars. There's two big differences with boats. With a car, when you accelerate, the loads are high. Mm -hmm. Once you get up to cruising speed on the uh, interstate, the motorway, mm -hmm. the autobahn, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> <laughs> the loads are relatively low, mm -hmm. so so you then you can, you've just got wind resistance, but no right, more. and you you've got a pretty fair range mm -hmm. in a boat. The loads when you accelerate are, uh, are less because the prop slips. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you start to approach cruising speeds, the hull resistance goes up through the roof. You know, mm -hmm. there's a curve that goes like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the wave making drag. Mm -hmm. So once you get to cruising speeds, the loads are continuously high. Mm -hmm. So that means for a given battery size, the range is quite limited. Mm -hmm. And then the other huge difference is every time you brake in a hybrid car, you can recover the braking energy. So much of that energy that you spent climbing mm -hmm. the hill or getting up to speed, yeah. you can recover it. When you go down. In a yeah. boat, mm -hmm. there's no uh, energy recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, so you put those two things together, and it's almost impossible to put enough batteries on a boat to get more than, say, uh, one hour at cruising speed. Mm -hmm. So if your cruising speed is uh, seven knots, that's, um, you know, seven seven mm -hmm. miles if it's 20 knots that's mm -hmm. 20 miles but yeah. but fundamentally uh the only way we can electrify boats right now is for short range cruising mm -hmm. yeah. and if we want to go further then we've got to have a generator on the boat. Mm -hmm. yeah. and at which point actually if you if you work out the efficiencies and the economics of it uh, it's very hard to make that more efficient than just having the engine that's driving mm -hmm. the generator drive the propeller in the first place. Yeah. Well, I mean, you need to transfer kinetic energy right. into electricity and then back to kinetic yeah, energy. There are theoretical mm -hmm. efficiency gains, but in practice, it's really hard yeah. to, mm -hmm. to realize them. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see um, the viability of electric boating for offshore boating mm -hmm. uh, until we've got much higher energy density batteries. Yeah. Yeah, but even then, the energy needs to come from somewhere. So well, so that's the second part of this. Um, we have no shoreside infrastructure mm -hmm. to support electric boating. Mm -hmm. uh, if we all of us had electric boats and we, we went out for the weekend and we went back and we plugged into the marina, we'd crash the shoreside mm -hmm. power supply. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the only government that I know of at the moment that's actually investing in in uh, electric supplies to marinas for electric boating is the is the Norwegian government. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's no other significant investment that I know of mm -hmm. in the necessary shoreside capability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I was also saying like if you, I mean, yeah, if you get back to the marina every evening, then that's a viable option. But if like me, for example, you're anchoring out pretty much the whole summer, I would need yeah. a lot of solar panels right. to get a better. Like, uh, it's totally it's, impractical. Yeah. I, I did a calculation on my boat. Mm -hmm. um, my, uh, if I'm doing six or seven knots, my, let me see, the, I'm pulling about 10 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it takes to push our boat at six or seven knots. And that's without so, wind or wave or anything? Yeah, against... that's in flat water. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we uh, power for an hour, that's uh, somewhere around 10 kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I would need hundreds of square feet of solar panels mm -hmm. on the boat mm -hmm. uh, to generate you know, 10 kilowatts mm -hmm. of energy. It, it's the solar power is terrific for house mm -hmm. boats. It's simply not practical. And in fact, when you see these boats that operate under solar power, you know, they've got huge beam, they've yeah. got acres of solar panels yeah. on them. Yeah. And even at, and even so, you know, if it's cloudy and at nighttime, mm -hmm. uh, and, they're, and they're going at very slow speeds as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the technology is not there. Uh, mm -hmm. It might be. Um, interestingly enough, Drive in December of 2021, uh, Tesla, GM, Ford, 
Volkswagen mm -hmm. all announced that they anticipate having a new generation of lithium ion batteries by 2025, so we're only talking uh, three years away, mm -hmm. that would have at least double the energy density of what we've got now. That's and, significant. Uh, and, uh, uh, and maybe even uh, treble or quadruple. Mm -hmm. So then you could run it three or four hours with a, yeah. with a proper But then you've still got battery bank. the problem, you go back to the dock and you plug in and, and you, uh, you crash the shoreside mm -hmm. uh, power supply or you fry the wiring on the dock. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the whole thing has to come as a package. Yeah. We need the shoreside infrastructure, we need the improved battery technology, mm -hmm. we, we need probably um, a new generation of electric propulsion motors. Mm -hmm. um, so we can right now, we can electrify short range boating. Yeah. Anybody that just leaves the dock mm -hmm. to go cruising for the day and just uses mm -hmm. the motor to get in and out of the slip yeah. and then go sailing and then comes back. Uh, electric propulsion is really attractive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anybody that wants range, yeah. it's not Exactly. Yeah. Well, unless you sail a lot, huh? but I know, I know a couple of people who actually have put electric engines on the boat, but you really are dependent on the wind then. So well, it is an option, but you have to sail. And then you can freewheel the prop and you can mm -hmm. regenerate. Mm -hmm. And if you can get the prop, the boat speed up above 10 knots, mm -hmm. you can regenerate a fair amount of energy like uh, some of these fast catamarans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 10 knots uh, is also, for most cruisers, it's, it, you it's can't not, get a, not a normal speed at which we sail. <laughs> yeah, I've done a fair amount of regen testing. And when you get to, uh, you can basically get about a kilowatt off a typical recreational boat propeller mm -hmm. uh, once you get above eight knots of boat speed. But, but who, who in a monohull consistently sails at more than eight knots? Yeah. Not very many people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, Nigel's take on electric boating. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. But if you want to learn more about actually electric and hybrid proportion, we do have a module on our advanced marine electric course at Boat How To, where uh, Nigel actually talks about all the experiments that he did in this domain. We don't want to discourage you, but we're kind of being realistic. Many but, people tried it and many got disappointed. There are ways of combining, you know, a, a diesel engine with mm -hmm. an electric propulsion mm -hmm. that look pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, that's parallel and serial hybrid, so we can talk about that yeah. separately, but there are ways of doing this that will significantly improve uh, efficiency, but they're expensive yeah. uh, and uh, they're quite complicated, so there's a fair amount of technology involved and they're not that well developed at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, check out boathowto.com. We hope to see you next time. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>